have noticed that the Twitter sentiment around Cardano has been more negative lately. This change isn't a reflection of our project somehow failing, but rather the desired result of Voltaire. Those were not my words. Those are the world's words of founder Charles Hoskinson of Cardano on an X post where he talked about exactly what the hell is going on in the ADA community. Continuing on, he said there have been years of pent up grievances unexplored roadmap items, unfunded growth strategies, and needed partnerships that haven't been addressed due to Cardano's governance not scaling to meet the needs of the ecosystem. Now that Voltaire is here, the new governance is capable of listening and adapting to meet these needs and also executing a new roadmap to grow the ecosystem dramatically. I have my own very long list of grievances that couldn't get addressed before. Talking about working on Cardano native assets, uh, he mentions Midnight, and he says, I'm keenly aware of the things that need to be done for CNAs from custody to liquidity. I'll do my part, but I'm glad we have an actual government by and for the people of Cardano to work with to also do their part. We'll get into that. Uh, some headway in news on the tenets that, we, uh, that came out, the 11 tenets of the Cardano Constitutional Committee. Also, what is happening overseas? And Cardano... Did another first in the blockchain space. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll look at some charts and what is happening right now that we saw happen prior to the massive run-up from $0.05 cents to $3 in Cardano. We're seeing something very similar. I'll get to that a little bit later in the video. Now, I said Cardano did another first. And here it is. Cardano hosts first legally enforceable contract in Argentina. So big shout out to Cardano. Man, I'm telling you guys. This Cardano-Argentina partnership, I think, is going to be massive. We know El Salvador and the whole Bitcoin strategy, right? But El Salvador is minuscule in economy compared to Argentina. They're the second largest economy in South America. They rank in the top 25 globally. Uh, and they have a president that's willing to start from scratch. And here is Charles Hoskinson. Here is Cardano. And we now have the full governance in place to take advantage of that situation down there. Super exciting stuff uh, that's going to be coming, I believe, in the next year to two years for Cardano and for Argentina. Now, the contract is a loan agreement between Cardano ambassadors Mauro Andrioli and Lucas Machia for 10,000 ADA tokens worth approximately $3,380 payable in four months at a 10% interest. Not bad. We know credit cards are charging us around 25%. Uh, this is a quote from Andrioli. We did it. We have just signed the first legally and judicially enforceable contract on the Cardano network in full compliance with the laws of the Argentine Republic. While Cardano supports smart contracts, Andrioli told Cointelegraph the contract at hand wasn't a smart contract. However, it could, quote, set the path for Argentine courts to start acknowledging smart contracts as a technology to facilitate commercial agreements. This is going to be absolutely massive. And the, the one key area, the one sector, I believe this will be able to save a lot of people money uh, and make something affordable that has been so unaffordable for people is buying homes. I'm not going to get into the depth of that. Maybe I'll do a video later. But... Smart contracts being legally enforceable is an absolute game changer. Another quote here, legally this establishes evidence and streamlines procedural steps marking the initial phase of creating favorable uh, jurisprudence in the country and facilitating commercial transactions. This is all possible or this is all coming off the back of Cardano's Chang hard fork uh, with the Voltaire era coming into age. Speaking of Voltaire. We have the 11 blockchain tennis. This is something that Charles has been talking about, right? The United States government has a constitution. They have a framework. Charles has long said he wants Cardano to have it as well. Here we go. The 11 blockchain tenets towards a blockchain bill of rights. Designing blockchain systems is a challenging endeavor. It is also a continuous process as these systems are long lived and aim to capture requirements that evolve during their lifetime. Community decision making frequently requires ass assessing highly technical proposals that can be mutual conflict, mutually conflicting and impactful in various ways. To meet the above challenges for any blockchain project in this community, it can be useful to follow a first principles approach that evaluates whether a specific improvement proposal aligns well with a handful of general principles or tenets that are widely accepted by the community and reflect the basic rights the community members expect to enjoy as users and contributors. 
Here are the 11 tenants. Tenant number one, transactions cannot be slowed down or censored and will be expediently served for their intended purposes. Tenant one, this essentially is a parallel to the First Amendment of the Constitution, which is free speech, right? This is what they said here. So not shockingly enough, we know Ethereum's had an issue with this, with validators blacklisting certain wallets, essentially essentially becoming censorship. Cardano doesn't want to do that. Tenant number two, the cost of a transaction should be predictable and cannot be unreasonable. Tenant three, no one should be prevented from developing and deploying their application as they intended it to. Tenant four, everyone's inputs and contributions to the system will be recognized, recorded, processed, and assessed fairly. Now, the value that different system contributors offer in terms of maintenance, development, and transaction processing time should be fairly accounted for, so it can be rewarded as necessary in an appropriate manner. It's a very important one. Ten of five, the value and data users contribute and or create will not be locked or processed without their consent. Users should be allowed to transfer their private data to any system or platform they desire to engage with. This is very important uh, because it allows people the freedom, right? You say you're about freedom. Are you really doing it? Cardano is. Ten at six, the system will safely preserve the value and information stored in it. Talking about it can be in, uh, safety can be interpreted in two ways. Number one, the integrity of the information recorded. And number two, value preservation. This one is, is pretty interesting. So for example, on the value preservation, anticipating a volatile market, users have the option to use mechanisms such as stable coins to preserve the value of their assets. Tenet seven, no resources will be unnecessarily spent. Um, I hate to bring up another project, but we saw kind of with Polkadot, they blew a lot of their marketing budget, which caused a lot of downward pressure on the price of the DOT token for a lot of things that didn't really bring any users or any network activity into the Polkadot ecosystem. The way I read this, the way I interpret this is, hey, we want to kind of avoid that scenario. So here we have no resources will be unnecessarily spent. Uh, that is finding the best algorithm for the given task is important for this tenant. We do not want the system to waste more resources than necessary for a given task. You take a look at the U.S. government currently, they overspend a massive amount of money on their government contractors, kind of like Boeing, like Lockheed Martin. They overpay for things. All they're saying here in this tenant is, hey, the price should be reasonable. We shouldn't overpay for something. People shouldn't be able to take advantage of our treasury and put in bids, and we accept them that are overpriced. Tenant eight, the system will treat users fairly and will evolve according to their collective uh, collective will aiming at its long-term sustainability. Ten and nine, talking about privacy in terms of their action and data should be preserved. A useful parallel in this context is the data minimization principle that asks for the minimum disclosure of information needed, essentially zero knowledge. We see that uh, should be coming to Cardano as well. Ten and ten, the system will offer users ways to engage that do not require them to break local laws. The users should be offered tools to engage with the system that do not require them to violate laws in the jurisdiction they operate. It's talking about, hey, Cardano is global. Every government has a different set of rules. People that are operating in those jurisdictions should have the tools available to be able to do what they want to do without breaking the local laws. And tenant number 11, the system's operations should be transparent, predictable, verifiable, interpretable, and without asymmetries. This suggests that system software should be open source and the binaries offered are publicly verifiable. This has been Cardano's ethos from the very beginning. Open source, peer reviewed. So big shout out to Cardano and to Charles Hoskinson. Now, I did say earlier that we're seeing something we saw in the run up to 2021 where the price of ADA went from five cents to around $3. And what I'm talking about is this chart from uh, intotheblock.com. This is balance of ADA wallets by time held. In blue, you have the hodlers that people have been holding for more than one year. In green, you label the cruisers. These are people who have balances held between one year, sorry, one month and 12 months. And then uh, the, the uh, orange is the traders, right? So people that have been holding it for less than one month. If we zoom in to this zone right here, where you saw the holders, the hodlers, the people that ho have held for more than one year, as this started to gain more market share, Cardano started rising from around four cents 
They're a little bit down to three cents and then a seven cents, 11 cents. And as this gap started narrowing, as the one year plus balance holders started to decrease and the one to 12 month users, assuming these are the new people that are coming in, they start to gain more market share. That is when Cardano hit its all time high. Well, guess where we are right now? We are currently in this phase, in this phase right now. This is current on the very far right. And this was at the depths or at the very early stages of the bull market. So if you look in retrospect, you say, man, I wish I, if I could have gotten Cardano at five cents and sold it at $3, man, I would have made so much money. Well, this is your Cardano at five cents moment for in the future to sell at your $3 moment. And so this is the same setup. Am I saying this is going to play out exactly like it did last cycle? No, of course not. Nothing ever does. But history tends to rhyme. And so uh, this is something I've been following and I've been accumulating ADA since sub uh, sub 35 cents. And I hope you watching have been as well. You'll be handsomely rewarded. Speaking of ADA and the price, we take a look at something very important also that has happened on the ADA chart. This is ADA on the 12 hour. I have a couple things on here. I have one, I have the price action concepts, which gives us some clear cut levels of where buying and selling is happening and potential support and resistance zones. Also, on the 12 hour, we're seeing a little mini inverse head and shoulders playing out. And we could potentially be in the midst of a breakout to the upside from that as well. But what I want to point your attention to is the Sin City Crypto Liquidity Flow Index. What we've seen, and I'll zoom this down a little bit. We've seen the price of ADA start to go down. This was back on Sunday, October 6th. It peaked out around 36.7 cents on a wick. Started trending down, but something interesting happened. As the price continued to trend down, money flow flipped from red to green. So more money started flowing into the asset than flowing out of the asset. And then we had a large liquidity grab down at around 33 cents. And Cardano went from 33 cents to currently at 36.45 cents. We're continuing to see the money flow stay green. But more importantly, uh, if you're a swing trader... We've seen a bounce off the sentiment from the midline of Cardano. And typically, when we see the sentiment above the midline, price is in an upward trajectory. And so uh, Cardano, short-term chart, looks pretty good. We do want to take out this high of around 40 cents. We are creating higher highs and higher lows. But this high is extremely important, that 40.4 cent level. We want to retake that high build some support on top of it, and then take off to that 70, 80 cent level, which we saw was our local high in this market cycle. So a lot of exciting things happening on Cardano. We haven't even had part two of the Chang hard fork yet, which will unlock that 1.5 billion ADA in the treasury. Everything is coming along. There's workshops happening globally. There's one workshop in Perth, Australia. They were having workshops in Argentina. So the community is coming together the price will also come together, my friends. Fear not. If you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe and come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you next one. Peace.